Hi dear friends and subscribers, uh, welcome to your Cricket Happening Show and in this Cricket Happening Show I am going to look at the first one day international of the Commonwealth Bank series, the Tri-Series which started uh, between India, Australia and Sri Lanka and yesterday was the first game and uh, well India have lost the first one day international uh, by the Duckworth Lewis method, uh, the reason being the match was reduced to 32 overs and India uh, in reply to Australia's 216 for 5 in uh, 32 overs were bowled out for 151 uh, in the 30th over. So they played 29.4 overs and they were bowled out. So they couldn't actually complete the full quota. The overs were reduced. It was a 32 over game. Uh, well, I'll be talking about that. And the other thing that I would like to talk about is uh, a very, very interesting test match which is happening uh, at the Dubai International Cricket Stadium. Uh, today was the third day. Well, Azhar Ali uh, became <clears throat> the Pakistani batsman who actually, uh, you know, uh, what was very interesting about it is Azhar Ali, uh, in fact, scored his highest score in first class cricket. So even in his Pakistan domestic scene, he has not made such a score. And what a stupendous innings this was under the circumstances. 157 runs he made with 10 fours and 1 six, which I'll talk about. Well, in this uh, situation, uh, uh, I would say Pakistan are definitely on the driver's seat. The ball is turning. And England are requiring another 298 runs with all their wickets intact. And they were 36 for no loss at stumps on day 3, which I'll talk about first. Let's first go on to the MCG, where India and Australia uh, clashed in the first of the One Day Internationals. Uh, it was uh, Mahindra Singh Dhoni who actually won the toss. And on a blustery day, where the wind was really, really blowing, um, uh, Mahindra Singh Dhoni decided to insert the opposition first. So Australia batted first. And uh, his decision was absolutely uh, justified uh, the way uh, the Indian ball was bowled, especially it was, uh, but there, were, there was a surprise as far as the Indian team was concerned. Uh, there, was, there was no Virendra Sehwag, there was no Zahir Khan, there was no Umesh Yadav, there was no Irfan Patan. So that came as a real surprise. Uh, the reason being, uh, when Dhoni, uh, Dhoni was asked on the toss, when he was asked about uh, why Sevag is not there? He made a statement saying that Sevag was rested. Now, if if Sevag uh, being rested, according to me, uh, in a one-day international, uh, doesn't make any sense because if it's a, if it's a test match, I would I I could still go with it. Uh, but uh, what what if you say that uh, Sevag was rested in the first one-day international? Well, uh, I can only say probably he's not fit, and uh, I only hope that uh, Dhoni uh, actually you know whatever he told. Probably it was an error and, you know, Dhoni, in fact, Sevag was unfit. But, well, anyways, uh, the match started with uh, Matthew Wade uh, making his debut uh, and also Daniel Christian coming into the team. And uh, Matthew Wade and David Warner opened the innings and what a splendid bowling from Vinay Kumar. If you see his bowling analysis, seven hours no made and 21 runs on three wickets. In fact, the, 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 first, uh, the first few overs, I mean, uh, the, the, the opening burst of Praveen Kumar and Vinay Kumar was absolutely good. In fact, they kept the batsmen so quiet that they couldn't do anything. They couldn't really uh, go for anything. They had to really, really, uh, you know, uh, really um, just uh, stay put at the crease. Uh, and uh, it was some tight balling from Pravin Kumar and Vinay Kumar swinging the ball. As I said, the wind was blowing, but they couldn't control the swing. But Vinay Kumar was super. He was he had notched up. His pace had gone up a notch. He was born at 140, and he was hitting the. Uh, right areas and making it very difficult especially for David Warner he made life very difficult and David Warner had to went to a frustration stroke there as Vinay Kumar uh, bowled to David Warner and David Warner tried to go for a big heave and he was castled by Vinay Kumar for six and Ricky Ponting uh, played a bit too early at Vinay Kumar and Shuresh Ryan approached the catch very easily so he was gone for two and uh, two wickets were down at that stage and then Matthew Wade uh, was uh, joined by Michael Clark. So just talking about the game, Michael Clark uh, was a victim of Rahul Sharma for 10. Uh, Michael Hussey contributed a good 45 of 32 balls with four fours. But David Hussey uh, and Matthew Wade went after the balling. Matthew Wade uh, initially started off in a very subdued fashion, uh, but when he saw that the wickets were going and the run rate was really dipping, Matthew Wade, you know, hit a very monstrous six of the balling of Pravin Kumar, and then. He also carved him uh, through the uh, through the point region for a four. Uh, in fact, he made 67, and he looks to be very impressive, and that is very good news for Australia because his skipping is good, his batting he brought up a good catch too. 67 of 69 balls with four fours. 
Uh, David Hussey pasted the Indian bowling, especially the spinners, to all corners of the field uh, because uh, the run rate as the match was reduced due to rain uh, to 32 overs. And David Hussey pasted 61 of just 30 deliveries, four, uh, four fours in that knock and three sixes. And Daniel Christian uh, contributed 17 not out of 16 balls <coughs> and Australia finished off with 216. So other than Praveen Kumar and Vinay Kumar bowling well, uh, there was nothing really for Indians, uh, Indian bowling to talk about. Uh, Ryan, um, okay, just talking about the um, the Indians' um, uh, reply there. Uh, they made 100. There were 151 all out. Uh, Gautam Gambhir and Sachin Tendulkar started. Gautam Gambhir was uh, gone. He was a victim of a ball that bounced a bit from Mitchell Stark. Mitchell Stark was the one who actually gave them the breakthrough. So he was gone for five. Sachin Tendulkar. Uh, again, uh, struggling there, caught by Ricky Ponting, a beautiful catch taken by Ricky Ponting, diving and taking it low to his, uh, before it hit the ground. So he was gone with Michael Stark for two, and India were really, uh, you know, um, uh, in a very uh, spot of bother there. Virat Kohli and Rohit Sharma were there. They tried to, uh, you know, resurrect the innings, but they couldn't do it as uh, Clint McKay came on his first spell and uh, struck it rich by actually claiming Virat Kohli, who was, uh, Virat Kohli actually played very excessively with 30, 31 of 34 balls. Uh, three fours. Uh, Rohit Sharma contributed 21 of as many balls with two fours. But Clint McKay came in and picked up uh, two quick wickets of Virat Kohli and Rohit Sharma to put a spanner in the works for India. And then uh, it was uh, left to the other player, Suresh Raina, failed as he was out for to Daniel Christian for four. Uh, Dhoni contributed a good 29 with uh, one four. But as you know, pressure started building up uh, with uh, runs wanted. Uh, he had to go for his strokes. Uh, Ravinder Jadeja contributed 19 of 25 balls. Uh, the tail couldn't back for India. Ashwin was run out beautifully by Daniel Christian for five. Rahul Sharma was uh, clean bowled by Doherty for one. Praveen Kumar made 15 of 17 balls with two fours. Vinay Kumar was not out on follow 15 balls with one four. Uh, bowling Harris at five overs, none for 28. Mitchell Stark was uh, absolutely the pick. He bowled superbly, two for 30. He, he actually, you know, uh, he actually rocked India with those two wickets. Uh, in the early overs. Daniel Christian uh, showed uh, what a good all-rounder he is. Five overs, no made in one for 21. Clint McKay uh, came in and uh, struck it rich, as I said. 4.4 overs, no made in four for 20. Xavier Doherty, two for 36. Mc uh, Michael Clark, two overs, no made in none for 11. So for India, uh, well, they have to really, really work hard. The first one-day international is done and dusted. Uh, Australia in this tri-series have taken a lead, 1-0. Uh, Let me take you on to the next match between England and uh, Pakistan just played at the Dubai International Cricket Stadium and as I said today the key was to knock off the uh, uh, the partnership between Yunus Khan and uh, and uh, Azhar Ali and well they definitely did that because Yunus Khan today uh, was dismissed early in the morning he was uh, out for 127 of 221 balls 12 fours and 1 6 as was LBW uh, bowled uh, brought for 127. Uh, Azhar Ali stood like a rock, uh, lots of patience and what a tremendous player he is. He's, he's very nimble on his feet against the spinners uh, and he also is not afraid uh, whenever the time comes. He's, afraid to, uh, he's not afraid to come down the pitch and actually loft the ball as he did it with a lot of regularity. And uh, what was good was his impeccable defense and what a, he, he has a lot of technique. He, uh, whenever he plays the spinners, his head is right in front, uh, his pad, he covers his pads and he plays superbly. And in fact, uh, that was all there for C. As I said, he made his highest first-class score, uh, um, highest uh, score ever uh, in international cricket. Because even in his first-class score in Pakistan, in domestic cricket, he has not made 150. So this would have given him a lot of confidence. And I think he's a real, real player uh, for the future now. 157, uh, a monumental effort of 442 balls, 10 fours and 1-6. And really thanks to... Um, in fact, um, um, Azhar Ali, the youngster, and, and Yunus Khan partnership, Pakistan's score swelled down to 365. But after that, um, um, Graham Swan and Monty Panesar getting another fiver there, just ripped through the Pakistan lineup. As uh, Ms. Baalak was the only one who had some resistance, 31 with 1 4. Other than that, Monty Panesar just weaved a web around them and started picking up wickets. Asad Shafiq was LBW bowl, uh, Panesar for 5. Adnan Akmal got a beautiful ball from Panasar which turned across him and clean bowled him for duck. Abdul Rahman was caught Anderson bowled Swan. Swan chipped in with two wickets. Ajmal was out for one to Swan. And Umar Gul was LBW bowled Panasar as the last man. 365 all out. Uh, five wickets for 124 runs for Manti Panasar. 
Graham Swan three for hundred and one. So they were among the sponsors. And as I said, it was a real credit to Yunus Khan and Azhar Ali who actually weathered this England attack. Not only did that, they did it with um, a great skill because to play the spin on a turning track, uh, it was uh, it was not so easy. But I thought uh, they did a wonderful job. Uh, one thought that the pitch was easing out, but uh, the spinners once again showed there is some turn available with Graham Swan and Monty Panesar coming in and uh, uh, making some quick strikes. If you see the score, uh, there was uh, this was the time when Yunis Khan was dismissed 244 from 331. Misbah Ul-Haq was dismissed. Now after that, in a matter of 34 runs, uh, you had six wickets falling. So that really tells you the tale. And England finished with 36 for no loss of 20 overs um, at, at close of play. Andrew Stoss was not out on 19, both of them living a charmed life there, not out on 19 with 1-4, and Elster Cook not out on 15 uh, with 1-4, 36 for no loss. England's another 298 runs to win the match. Uh, the target they required uh, is uh, 334 uh, to actually win the match, and they were 36 for no loss at close of play. With Umar Gul, uh, bowling well, none for learn, Isos Chima, two overs for five, uh, Mohamed the Bowl 5 overs 2, none for 6, 7 overs for 12 runs for the very, very dangerous uh, Abdul Rahman. Rajmal Bowl 2 overs on made a none for 2. 36 for no loss under 298 runs separate Pakistan uh, from actually uh, clinching the series, not only doing that, but actually whitewashing the series. Alistair Cook and Strauss have lived dangerously, I would say, but tomorrow is going to be another day with the pitch, as I said, is definitely changing color. Sometimes you see it playing easy, sometimes uh, the ball turns. Uh, so, I think definitely Pakistan definitely have the edge, no doubt about it. 298 runs, even though England have 10 wickets intact, it's not going to be easy. It's a very hard grind for them. 298 runs still to get. Uh, but pro and probably Strauss and Cook, uh, if uh, they can weather the early morning session and then the other batsmen follow. But I think it's a very tough task. Probably they could get to it, but again, uh, you, you're going to be caught in a very, very worn out pitch because of the wear and tear. Uh, with the footmarks uh, um, uh, there over there on the pitch and I think it's going to be a difficult task for England and uh, probably Pakistan uh, are really really inching towards their 3-0 uh, series victory here but again uh, England can uh, really play well and show uh, uh, they could they could actually you know learn something from Azhar Ali and uh, Yunus Khan the way they actually tackle the spinners and probably bring that and see uh, whether they can negate the Pakistan spin attack of Saeed Ajmal and Abdul Rahman uh, and do something about that. Well, uh, on this note, dear fans, friends and, cricket, um, and subscribers for the Cricket Happening Show, your host Ram, signing off. Thank you.